has to get hot with Falcons. For Geelong, there's a new coach, new import, and plenty of new recruits ready to claw the Cats towards great heights. I want to get the Super Cats to a level where there's four teams from Victoria that people don't want to play against. The Falcons' nest has also seen plenty of changes, and tonight we get our first look at their new lineup. The big test awaits both teams as Network 10 presents Week 1 of the Mitsubishi Challenge. Yes, a new season is upon us. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the arena in Geelong for this week one clash between the Supercats and the Newcastle Falcons. Both teams' pre-season form has been pretty ordinary, to say the least, but with the real stuff now here, I'm sure both sides are going to lift. Well, Channel 10's been doing the basketball for five years now, and I'm proud to say that uh, Dean Templeton is again my co-commentator co this year. Welcome, Dino. It's an Olympic year, an exciting year, and plenty to look forward to. Well, thanks very much, Steve. Of course, it is a terrific year, Olympic year. And I think the season this year will be fantastic. And one of the reasons will be the emergence of all these young Aussie players. And we're going to see some of them in action tonight. And it's going to be a great game. Well, both these teams have made some massive changes over the summer. we we'll start with the Newcastle Falcons. Made eight changes to their roster. In come the new import, Van Dyke. It's not Dick, but David. We've got Scott Ninnis, Armfield, Reese, McGregor, Moore and Pepper. Out of the Falcons squad goes Smith. Tony Jensen gone to the North Melbourne Giants. Adams, Alexander, Johnson and Grant Kruger has gone to Towns. For the Super Cats, in Rayos. He's a great athlete, their new import. Southwell from the Magic. Virtue, unfortunately, won't be playing tonight because of a bereavement in the family. Scalzi and Grabau. And out for the Super Cats go Arnold, Wickstrom, Joins, Cass, and David Graham. Now, speaking of David Graham, he was a former Australian star. He's played for the Hawks. He's played for the Magic, the Giants, and the Super Cats. David is now our sideline commentator this year. Terrific to have you along, David. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Well, of course, you've been through it so many times. What will the players be feeling tonight? Well, look, the Supercats have had a pretty traumatic off-season, and uh, they'll be excited to get that out of the way, and now certainly locked into the start of this season. And your tip for tonight? I'm going for Geelong. What a huge surprise. Let's have a look now at the uh, squads for these two teams, the uh, starting five. Supercats, Joey Wright, Simon Kerr will start, Sapwell, Exxon, who's got some knee problems, as has Wright, and Ray O's. For the Newcastle Falcons, it's Butch Hayes, Scott Ninnis, Reese, McGregor, and Van Dyke. Off the benches, Dino. Well, as you mentioned, Steve, the Supercats are decimated by injuries. Just four players suiting up. Ramsey, Scalzi, Grabeau, and Leonard. And for the Falcons, lots of new faces there. Armfield, Lowe, McLean, Moore, and Ben Pepper. And we're ready for a start here at the arena. It's the Supercats against the Falcons. Both rated 100 to 1 chances to win the championship this year. But you speak to both coaches and they're pretty determined to make the finals, that's for sure. I think that's the, the, the fact there, Steve, that both of these ball clubs, you know, they're really going to take one week at a time to use the old cliche. But of course, both of these teams are in a rebuilding stage and eight changes to the Falcons, just two guys on their roster from last year. So they've got a lot of uh, work to do on their chemistry. Supercats uh, in the blue strip going to the left of your television screen. Curls first shot, miss now Ninnis for Newcastle, throws up a shot. Now Van Dyke gets the shot blocked beautifully by Sapwell. Oh, that's sensational defensive effort by Rupert Sapwell. And as we saw in the limited minutes that that guy played with the Magic, he gives 190% every game, and he'll be on the floor anywhere you want him, and he's just going to be a great club man for the Supercats. Van Dyke drives, but he's been uh, king for the charge. So it's a turnover, no score. Supercats with the ball. Well, Van Dyke, of course, is the new import coming in for uh, Reggie Smith, of course, the centre last year who impressed everybody so much with the Falcons. He's gone on to bigger and better things. I believe he's playing in Europe. France, in fact, yeah. For some serious dollars. <laughs> and uh, Van Dyke has stepped into those rather large shoes. But have a look at Scott McGregor for uh, the Newcastle Falcons. He's guarding Ray O's inside the Geelong Supercats import, number 10. And he has been most impressive in the preseason. Sapwell off the glass. Good rebounding by Exum. And the captain of the Supercats will go to the line. Not sure how many minutes uh, the Supercats are going to have Cecil tonight, Dean, because he has had uh, knee surgery in the off-season and is, uh, well, in racing terms, a bit short of a gallop at the moment. Well, Cecil's going to be like that for the whole season, really. I mean, as David Graham will be able to testify, this guy just plays on a lot of heart. He's got what we would say. He's, well, if he was a racehorse, he'd be put down. The guy's got terrible <laughs> legs with respect to Cecil, but he gives 100% when he's out there, and he's such an uncanny player and has the ability to be able to get so, so many tremendous offensive rebounds. Actually, that would be a good question. How, who's had more knee operations, Cecil Exum or David Graham? I know David had, what, five in your career, was it, David? Uh, yeah, it was five from last count. Cecil's how about the same. Two points 
to the Falcons. Well, that's McGregor right there. Played in the Australian under-20 team that won the silver medal in, uh, against the Greece in the World Championship against Greece. And he had a tremendous preseason, including one game where he got 29 points and 19 rebounds against the Brisbane Bullets preseason. Just 18 years of age. Here come the Super Cats. That's a travel against Wright. And the Super Cats have turned the ball over. So Newcastle to take it. Butch Hayes to bring the ball back up the court. One of the warriors of the NBL is Butch Hayes. Certainly the general in this team. McGregor. That's two. And uh, many people say, Dean, that that young man is already the favourite for the Rookie of the Year. Well, he's got to be. I mean, uh, as I said, with that pre-season that he did have, I actually have underaged him. He's 20 years of age, so... Years up in there. There's Ray O's. You'll see a lot of that during this season. This guy can play. He's come from the University of Arizona, a tremendous school, a genuine athlete, young, and a very, very good basketball player at both ends of the floor. Butch Hayes won't be allowed to take that basket. Falcons will take it from the side. There's the foul on Sapwell. Uh, just a good quick move there by uh, Butch Hayes. He will have the quickness, of course, against Rupert Sapwell in that matchup. McGregor. He's a big, strong lad. He's been the uh, defensive effort by Exum. He stepped up into the hole, got position. Bit unlucky there for McGregor, but David Graham, you've got to be impressed already by the start that kid's had. He, he's certainly a big man. He works very well without the ball, and that's very impressive from his point of view. And uh, defensively, he's just got a nice hand in there on the pass, so I think he's a pretty good all-round player, player from this point. Bill tries to nick the ball. Hayes gets it back, spots up for three. Very sweet from Butch Hayes. See the Dino in the inning. As we have a look at this great dunk by Ray O's from an equally good assist from the veteran Cecil Exum but 22 years yeah. of age 570 kilos and eight foot six <laughs> well it seemed like that to you I can tell you right now but he's about now I'm gonna get into trouble here because I'll say six foot nine in the old language and 125 kilos in the new language against the size of the Falcons uh, it seems to be a little bit of contact there but referees let it go and that's what we like to see let the game flow I don't want to be stopping the game every 30 seconds. Hayes. Oh, raffle it, boys. Still a Newcastle ball. McLean did well to keep it in. Now Hayes will run down the clock. Half a minute to go. There's the clock on your screen. It's the Super Cats by one, 23 to 22. Oh, it's good steal. Just didn't come off for Jerry Wright. <laughs> Bad luck for the Super Cats, but another chance for the Falcons. Low. It's Hayes. Good defensive work by Scalzi. It's a Newcastle ball still. With 12 seconds left in the first quarter. Oh, it's tremendous stuff under that basket, isn't it? Rebounding-wise, both teams are not giving an inch. Good effort, as you called quite correctly by Scalzi against Hayes. And he's really been able to probably matches up a little bit better than Rupert Sapwell does. Hayes. Pepper. Hayes again. Eventually, the Falcons got a score. It took him about a minute to get it. But good defensive work by Geelong. However, at quarter time, it's the Falcons just with their noses in front. They lead the Supercats by one point. O's has got eight. Right, six. Well, they're a big unit, and I think in this particular matchup, they're, they're using that and exploiting that. I wouldn't mind him at centre-half back for Hawthorne at the moment. <laughs> and they could use him. Hayes. Up goes the shot. So at halftime here at the arena in Geelong, it's the Newcastle Falcons 48, leading the Super Cats 37. And let's go to the sideline now, and David Graham has got the new coach of Geelong, Ian Stack. Certainly do. Thanks for that, Steve. Um, Ian, in the tradition of uh, Geelong sports fans down here, they're uh, pretty keen to get one of their teams with a win. Last night, the footy team were beaten. What are you going to say at halftime to get your guys up in the last quarter? I think we uh, um, need to focus our offense a little bit more towards Rayos and Cecil inside. I think that uh, when those guys have handled the ball, usually something pretty good has happened for us. But 
37 points in a, in a, in a half of basketball isn't, isn't good enough. And uh, I think we can generate some more offense by getting the ball the inside to those guys. Yeah, it would certainly appear from our observations that Ose is working very hard down low, but uh, without much success in getting the ball inside. Yeah, yeah, that's... That's been, a, I think, a source of frustration for him and a source of frustration for me as well. Uh, when he does get it, they're, they're rotating down and doubling him, and uh, we need to come up to some sort of counter for that so he can be more effective for us. Good luck for the second half. And I also have Tom Wiesman down here. Tom, a uh, pretty good half so far. Well, we're pleased at this stage. We've got to build on this, though, but our execution was, uh, was better than what we thought it might be at this stage of the season. But we've got to do something about the offensive boards that we're giving up at the other end. You don't seem to have missed uh, Tony Jensen much, I think, with Armfield coming in there. Um, you've certainly got a couple of good pickups also with Scott Ninnis. Yeah, we've got some experience here, some guys that have been in the league, and that helps because we've got the young players also, and they've been uh, given that leadership, which is very important early on. Good luck for the second half. Thank you. Back to you guys. Thanks, David. They just sneaked on me there, the Tom Wisman. But uh, the Newcastle Falcons at the moment doing very nicely at halftime. They lead the Supercats by 11, 48 to 37. Get on.